Hey guys, it's Alex here again from Dark Monkey Balls. Uh, doing another podcasty type thing because really, like the videos, there's not a whole lot to update. I'm just kind of doing the breeding season thing here, putting boy snakes in with girl snakes and hoping the girl snakes act like drunk cheerleaders and take their pants off and dance around a little for the boy snakes. And hopefully, I get eggs. You know, I, I don't know. We'll see how things go. It's, you know, the third year I've been breeding ball pythons and um, still learning a lot of crap. A lot of stuff I don't know how to do. Like, um, I'm not good at palpating for follicles, which is something folks do to, like, keep track of when their girl snakes are, like, really ready to ovulate and stuff. And it's an important skill and I don't practice it and I, so far, haven't needed to do it. But uh, I guess if you have a bigger collection, it's kind of important so you don't waste time with some girls. Really, all I do is, is I put the male snakes I want to breed with the combos I want in with the females. And they if they lock up, I write it down. And if they don't, I write it down. I keep track of how much time they're in there for and all that good stuff. And eventually, the females become totally unreceptive to the males. And they no longer show any signs of interest. And normally, they go off food. And that means that they're done having whoopee time with the males. So that's about it. Uh, and then eventually they go to shed, and then they ovulate, and then they shed again, and then they lay eggs, and then I have baby snakes eventually, which is great. So that's pretty much all I do. And I, I took a list here, and I counted, because I apparently have been miscounting how many snakes I have, and uh, because one is on a breeding loan, and the other thing, and stuff, and I bought a couple things here and there. So uh, if my list is right, I'm up to 18, which isn't a lot, but um, next year actually, because I've had a lot of consistent feeders and fast growing females, I'm going to have probably about six to eight clutches that I could possibly produce next year, which is a lot for me uh, having them in a small system. So I just wanted to go over some strategery for maybe, you know, if you wanted to get into stuff and things to do and maybe things not to do. and. Uh, one of the things like I did when I first got into snakes, I was like, oh, hey, I like ball pythons. I'll get some. So I got about, you know, eventually I had like six. And then I was like, I like this snake and I like that snake. And I'm going to buy this and I'll buy those things. And I had like a fuck ton of random shit that I was never going to breed. And it was taking up space and money. And when you have a limited amount of space and money, uh, that's that's bad because it just takes up stuff. And you're wasting all your feeders. Well, not wasting, but I mean, like, they weren't pet snakes because I was, like, deluded and I thought I was going to breed blood pythons and berms and all this crap. And um, uh, I just don't have the time and money. So I eventually found them all homes and stuff and focused on the ball pythons, which if you want to get into a snake and if you want to breed something, you know, uh, I suggest you focus really on one species. Uh, it, it'll save you time, money, and heartache. Because when you focus on one species, everything's got the same requirements, everything needs the same food source, it's easier, you don't have to worry about what, you know, different species are all doing. And you can con concentrate your money into that collection, and you can build things up, you can have nicer snakes, you can have better combinations, and hopefully have better babies and offspring. And, uh, you know, it's good to do your research for uh, breeding stuff. Pythons, they're not that hard to breed. Uh, you know, you put the boy snake in with a girl snake and stuff happens. And if you're lucky or not lucky, but if you do things somewhat right, because it's not rocket science, but if you do it halfway right, you eventually get eggs and that's good. And everybody likes baby snakes, but then you got to incubate them and incubating again, isn't super hard, but if you do it halfway right and you can keep your temperatures at the right kind of range there, eventually they hatch. And really, unless it's an unhealthy snake or an unhealthy egg or you fuck up and you pour beer over everything, then the snakes will kind of hatch out and be okay and be like, hey, yeah, buddy, woo, all right, woo. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not that bad and not that hard. But if you get into other things like boas, boas are kind of a bitch. You know, uh, I know a lot of people that try to be breed boas and they have good luck and some have bad luck and it's kind of a pain in the ass because the thing with boas is that they're fucking inconsistent. They will breed sometimes and then they'll lock up and you'll be like, yay, and you get, you know, boa juice all over the cage and the females look like they're going to ovulate and they get all huge and puffy and they're pissy and like you think they're going to be shitting out babies soon because that's what they do. They give live birth and everybody's like, hey, live birth, that's easier than incubating eggs. Well, all right, maybe, kind of, because technically you don't have to take an egg out of the box and then put it in another box with stuff and keep track of it, which takes all of two minutes 
to do and then like maybe 10 minutes during the week to keep track of very very difficult yes live bearing is much easier but um they're, they're fucking inconsistent snakes, man. They will take seasons off. They will look like they're going to breed. And all of a sudden, they don't shit out any babies for you. And you're kind of like, what the fuck? So, that's bad. That's in the bad things if you want to breed snakes and sell them. The other issue, too, is you need to have a way to get rid of the snakes. Like, you need to be able to sell them or find a place that can sell them for you. And maybe, if you're lucky, you get some kind of money in a wholesale market, which sucks. Because wholesale snakes are dirt cheap. And unless you got two fucking hundred... Baby snakes to wholesale out, you're not going to make any money. And um, while I don't want to focus on the money aspect, that is important because you can't fucking afford to feed and water and cage a ton of snakes your entire life because it drains your paycheck. So, uh, but you know, don't uh, don't get into reptiles for the money aspect because that's also wrong. You want to be passionate about what you're doing. You want to have information. You don't want to look like a dumbass and breed things that suck and have genetic issues which is a possibility so you got to know what you're breeding to what and what the possible outcomes are because hey with ball pythons and some other snakes if you concentrate genes you're going to get a fucked up snake that dies on you or uh, carpet pythons people are going for that leucistic carpet python which is technically or theoretically jaguar to jaguar but uh, every time you get a fucking leucistic snake it dies on you with the carpet pythons except unless you're canadian Henry Pyorun, or whatever his last name is, who's got one, and it's wonky as hell, but it eats and it's alive, and it's weird. It's like a leucistic, albino-pied carpet python. You gotta go look it up. It's pretty trippy looking. But, uh, you know, with balls, you can't breed certain things. You shouldn't breed a spider to a spider because it's gonna come out wonky, or, you know, you can't breed a sable to spider because it comes out wonky and other stuff. And there's a lot of genetic things with ball pythons that you want to keep track of, and, uh, with any snake, um, there's there's a morphin berms, I think, that's like the labyrinth or something. I could be talking out of my ass, I don't know. But it may be genetically weak. And if you keep concentrating genetic, genetically weak animals, that's bad. And bad things will happen. And you don't want bad things to happen. You want good things to happen, which is why you need to do some research and figure out exactly what it is that you want to breed and how to breed it. Because then that's good and you get stuff and everybody's happy and yay, you get baby snakes and... They hatch out with their cute little baby snake faces, and uh, then you get to realize, holy shit, holy shit, I gotta fucking feed all these little baby snakes. And that's it! <laughs>